past two decades, the hard courts of Washington have been Andre Agassi's personal playground. The world's number one player has come here 14 straight years, walking away with the title a record five times. Tonight, Agassi returns to the nation's capital with just one loss in 22 hard court matches this year. Will Andre's DC dominance continue? It's the Leg Mason Tennis Classic, next. Raymond James presents ATP Tennis. It is semifinal Saturday at the Lake Mason in Washington. Our night match featuring the number one player in the world, Andre Agassi, taking on the rising star from Chile, Fernando Gonzalez. Hi, everybody. Welcome back to our nation's capital, and welcome back to the 34th annual Leg Mason Tennis Classic. I'm Brett Haber. We join you once again from Rock Creek Park here in Washington, part of the National Parks Service. We've got one semifinal in the books. Tim Henman, after facing match point against, came back to beat the hottest player on the tour, Andy Roddick. So Henman is into the final. Who will join him there? With the answer to that and more, I bring in my partner, former Davis Cup captain and veteran Donald Dell. And Donald, we've got Andre Agassi here tonight. He's won this tournament five times. What about D.C. suits him? so well. Well, he loves the playing conditions. He likes the stadium, uh, and he's very confident on this surface, and he'll be playing awfully well tonight. Gonzalez have to hit a lot of winners. He had to play awfully well last night as well. James Blake was the defending champion here, but his reign came to an end courtesy of Andre last night, although he did get off to a slow start. Well, Andre lost that first set, but he's coming back here in the second set. You're going to see why here. Beautiful forehand to the open side. And I watch the quickness of Andre on the baseline. 33 years old, he moves around like a cat. Blake hit a lot of winners at the beginning. Andre's a lot at the end to win the match as he served beautifully down the center there and went on to win. 6-3 in the third, the final score, so Andre gets a little payback after James Blake knocked him out of this tournament a year ago. Andre's opponent tonight, Fernando Gonzalez from Chile. Now, as soon as we hear South America, the first thing we think of is clay, but this guy can play on hard courts as well. Well, he's a good server. He's got a good forehand, and he's a shot maker. He goes for his shots. He's not going to try to out-rally Andre's, but I don't know if he can out-hit him from the base. Line. We'll see what kind of shots he can make tonight. Just a couple of minutes ago, our Russ Thaler caught up with Fernando Gonzalez. All right, Fernando, congratulations on making it to the semifinals. Your game with your big forehand reminds a lot of people of a young Andre Agassi. Was he one of the guys you watched growing up? Yeah, of course. I mean, I grew up watching Andre and Sampras, and, and it's a dream come true to play against Andre tonight. And, I'm very happy to be at the court with him, and I'd be more happy if I win. <laughs> and to win, you're going to have to put a lot of balls in play tonight, which sometimes happens, sometimes doesn't happen. What's the game plan? Yeah, the same one, I think. I have my own style. I just go for the shot, and I'm going to try. All right. Good luck to you tonight. Let's send it right back to the booth. All right, guys, thanks very much. So will Andre Agassi reclaim his throne here in Washington? He's got to get through Gonzalez to do so. The anthem is playing. First ball is coming up from Washington right after this. Of our second semifinal match of the day, the number one player in the world, Andre Agassi, and the rising star from Chile, Fernando Gonzalez. We had some rain here in Washington a little bit earlier today, but the skies are clear for the moment and with a little bit of luck, although you can see the breeze uh, blowing the trees. We will get this match in in its entirety without delay. Donald Andre Agassi, what can you say about what he has achieved at this venue? Five times a champion. Uh, he's been at this for 15 years, and uh, I dare say 15 years later, there's still no one better. Well, he's phenomenal at 33. He's, you know, he's been a pro since uh, he was 16 years old. He's played here 14 times, which is uh, quite remarkable. And the fans in Washington really like him. Very, very popular here. He sells. Ten times as many tickets as anybody else. One year we had Sampras and Agassi here about ten years ago, and it was incredible to me because the phones kept ringing for Agassi at about six to one when he was going to play. And he just has done so well on this court, uh, and he feels so comfortable. His uh, longtime manager and lawyer, Perry Rogers, went to Georgetown University here, and they grew up together. Uh, they're about the same age. Uh, uh, Perry may be a year or two older. And I think that's one of the reasons he comes back, because Perry always comes with him. Five times a champion, 90, 91, 95, 98, and 99. And he had a rather easy time this week until James Blake last night in the quarters when he lost that first set. But before that, Sargis Sargisian was straight sets easily. And Evo Hoiberger uh, was his second round opponent following the bye. So Andre lost his first set yesterday. Hard courts in general this year 
uh, Donald. He has been unbelievable. 22 and one on this surface this year. That's uh, nearly blemish free. Well, it's fabulous consistency. It's established why he's one in the world. Last night's match with Blake was as good a match as I've seen here in 10 years. The rallies, the shot making, tremendous competition. Blake played awfully well. Andre Agassi to serve the second semifinal. And quickly with a service winner to start. This is the kind of match where Andre would like to jump on top of Gonzalez, not let him get any rhythm or confidence if he can help it. There's that forehand we spoke of, that one a little bit wild. Donald, your keys for Andre Agassi tonight? Andre's got to keep his quickness and footwork going. That's his strength. He's got to stay focused and concentrate well. This guy's not going to be easy to beat. He's, he'll try to control the game from the baseline. He won't come in very often. Well, that's the weapon we've spoken about with Fernando Gonzalez. I think Russ Thaler put it nicely when he said it's an unbridled forehand a la Andre 15 years ago. He's going to hit it hard, and he doesn't always know where it's going to go. He goes for his shots. He won't temporize. Forty fifteen in this opening service game for Andre. The conditions thick here in Washington. You mentioned he likes the conditions here, likes the court here. His ball travels through the air quickly in the thick, humid air of Washington. Preps him for the U.S. Open. On the line. That's two winners off the forehand the first game, but, but it, let's watch. Gonzalez approaches the forehand. The ball's short, hits that big topspin swoop, and his ball goes right on the line. 40-30. And so Andre, not serving hard at 108, but placing it effectively around the box, just like we saw Tim Henman do in our first semifinal. And so Andre is on the board, one love. Fernando Gonzalez, Donald, what do we know about this young man? He has not had a tremendous amount of results on hard courts in this country, but he does appear to be an all-court player. Well, he's come up very quickly. He's age 23. He was sort of in the shadow of uh, Rios in Chile, who was number one at one stage, and Gonzalez has really emerged now. He's ranked 14 in the world. He turned pro only in 99, and he is the number one Chilean player and probably one or two in all of South America right now. Tremendous talent and very young. Started last year, ranked 135 in the world, and has had by any measure a meteoric rise through the ATP Tour rankings, up to number 14, as you mentioned, three titles to his credit. There's that forehand. What are your keys if Gonzalez is going to win this match? Well, for Fernando to win this match, he's got to do three things. He's got to return Andre's serve well. He's got to attack without making errors, open the court up with his forehand, and not get discouraged if Agassi gets on top of him. He's got to keep fighting. Agassi's going to try to get in there very quickly and get an early lead so he doesn't get any confidence for Fernandez. Big forehand, it works well, 40 love. Gonzalez loves his forehand. Andre out of court there, the ball's short, and Fernando just nails it with that big looper. Look, it leaves the ground when he hits the forehand in the alley of the... So a hold at love for Fernando Gonzalez, one all opening set. Here's how Fernando got here. Got a bye in the first round, as did all the seeded players. Got Julian Benito in straights. Mario Ancic, the young Croat, and then Max Mirny, the beast in the quarterfinals, has not dropped a set here. He beat, good. he beat two good Eastern Europeans there, though. Mirny has been the quarters of the French, quarters of Wimbledon. He's a player. The Belarusian player. He's a quality hardcore. <laughs> The let ball was out, and then Andre, Andre hits a winner. 
This guy has not seen a forehand. He does not want it. He runs around everything to get to that forehand side. It's the voluntary approach to hitting ground strokes, something Andre knows a thing or two about. It's interesting. Andre plays so quickly between points. When he's doing well, the points get faster and faster. He gets to the ball quickly, asks for the ball, serves quickly, turns right around. Seems to be in a rush when he's playing. Well. Burns of Andre Agassi showing the 33 years becoming the oldest player ever this year to hold number one. And we said at the start of the match, Fernando had to keep the ball deep and not make errors. He's got a weapon in the forehand, but he overhits a lot. And he makes a couple of careless errors. He gets in trouble quickly. Great serve. So easy, so comfortable. It looked like he just flicked his wrist, but his body weight going into the court. Hitting it hard enough for you, Donald? <laughs> you know, I was thinking about Andre at 33. He's going to be 34 next April. And he started playing the tour when he was 16 years old, which is really quite remarkable. He said he's going to play another two years at least. He could play seniors and regular tour at the same time when he hits 35. <laughs> yep. And he wants to play through 35, so we'll see. Pete Sampras, a year younger than Andre, is in all likelihood done with competitive tennis. Oh, yeah. I think he's really... Certainly semi retired, if not completely. Such a tribute to the shape that Andre keeps himself in that at this age he can maintain this high level battling guys like Gonzalez, whose 23rd birthday was this past Tuesday, and uh, runs them ragged, and they're the ones breathing heavy at the end of the points, not him. Gonzalez is hanging in there tough, though. It's three all. He keeps holding the serve. So three all on serve for a set. Not going to run that one down, though. Beautiful exchange of ground strokes, really on both wings from these guys. Gonzalez shows you here you can hit a backhand just as well. Here's Andre way out of court now. The ball let court over the net. And Andre slow coming back as Gonzalez nails it across court. 
Maybe, maybe five years ago he runs that one down. You know, but 33, maybe you let those go. I remember when Arthur Ashe won Wimbledon beating Connors in 1975. He was 32, and no one thought you could do much better than that at age. Andre, of course, keeps winning Grand Slam's titles. And he could be about to win this title again. 30-15, trying to advance to the final where Tim Henman awaits. He reached his first final of the year earlier today, knocking out Andy Roddick. Players holding serve with relative ease. Andre 40 15. Yeah. Yeah. Short ball, and that's what Andre normally does with short balls. 4 3 on serve. Fernando needs to rein that forehand in. We're back to Washington right after this. On her first set, Gonzalez serve. First double fault of the match. Andre already with four titles this season. In Houston he won, then in Miami. The Australian Open, of course, at the beginning of the year in San Jose. Right at him. Interesting there, he, took, he had a short ball, he played it right at Agassi, rather than angling it off. Let's watch it here. Pops it up fairly short. Gonzalez takes his time, goes right at him. There's no subtlety about that <laughs> overhead. Just nudges it. Nice short punch volley. Doesn't have to try to do too much with it. Had the open court and knew it. So 30 all now. Because now Agassi has game point for the first break of serve. First break point of the match. Oh, and a double fault his second of the game. And an unattractive way to lose one serve. First break of the match to Andre Agassi. He'll now serve for the first set. He's changing rackets. I don't know whether that racket slipped it. the grip was wet. There's Darren Cahill, Andre's coach. They got together about a year ago, and his confidant, Perry Rogers. Perry Rogers on the left there is his business manager and advisor and his awfully well-versed, very knowledgeable guy, very likable guy, and very close friend of Andre's. They grew up since they were 12 years old. 
Perry went to Georgetown University here in Washington, always comes back for the term. <laughs> Perry, the president of Agassi Enterprises, which in addition to running Andre's business in tennis, is involved in so many charitable operations, including uh, running the Agassi Academies, which is a charter school in Las Vegas that helps underprivileged kids and so much more. It's quite phenomenal what they're doing in that school. They all have little uniforms and spent $5 million already. The next stage is $18 million to build more classrooms. Oh. Ball was called wide. It was awfully close. And Andre seems to be in charge here now after the early break there at 3-4. 30 luck, two points from the set. Andre would love to make quick work of this, come back for the final and get out of town to Montreal, which is the next Tennis Master Series event next week. to the number one player in the world. Six games to three. Andre in charge on serve. We'll be back in set number two after this. So Andre Agassi captures the first set six games to three. And as we check the stats from that first set, two things stand out. Andre's serve percentage and the errors from Gonzalez. Unbelievable. 71% of his first serves. And of course, 11 unforced errors. That's what really hurts Gonzalez. And if you want to look for a turning point in the match, they were on serve at four games to three, 30 all point. And uh, this is where he had a chance to hit a ball into the open court and just blew it. Comes up and shovels it down the line, but he misses that by about four inches and he pounds the net. That cost him dearly because he lost his serve on the next point. So trying to start a new first game, second set. He's serving. Backhand down the line for a winner. does Gonzalez and it occurs to me that that's just the way Andre used to play when he was young. You talked earlier about that tennis in Stratton when he was 16 years old. He was a wild card. Untamed horse. That's exactly right though. He used to take big chances, blast his forehand much the way Gonzalez does. Andre unafraid to hit the overhead from behind the baseline. Well, he looked very comfortable, didn't he, hitting that ball? A lot of guys will just loop that forehand back in. Andre doesn't care. Here he is, the number one player in the world, sets up. And it's a perfect overhead from the baseline, much like a service motion there. Just with a really high toss on the surface. <laughs> yeah. Gonzalez has got to be very careful here and win this serve. You can't get careless and let Andre jump on an early break in the second set. 30 all. And with Gonzalez, you never know, as I said at the beginning, he's a shot maker. He goes for his shots, but he had 11 unforced errors in that first set to two for Agassi. to the handshake. And there is the weaponry of Gonzalez stepping way around the backhand side. He nails the forehand on a winner down the line. 
Wow, if that caught the line, it caught the outside inch. Boy, he did this the hard way. Look at him way out of court. He's got to make that shot or he loses the next rally. Deuce here. Another break point chance for Agassi. He's one of two so far. Overruled by the chair umpire, Fergus Murphy. Gonzalez will take two. And he did it again. Exact same place out of the doubles alley. Hits the forehand down the line just as two points before. And Andre's sort of smiling. He, he can't believe he makes this shot. Now watch where he ends up. Running around the backhand. He's out in the alley, and he goes for the winner and makes it. He doesn't even need the deuce court on his side. <laughs> and an ace up the tee. Gets himself out of trouble with a big forehand and a well-placed serve. His advantage now. Ooh. Beautiful return. He caught the ball early in front of his body. And for some reason, Gonzalez didn't move at all. Just stood and watched here after the high toss. Andre steps out there and blisters it down the backhand side. Deuce again. And another ball long, loose ground stroke, another great chance for Agassi. Tennis Classic is brought to you by MCI, where unlimited local, long-distance, and high-speed internet come together. By U.S. Airways, with the most convenient service to the most Caribbean islands from the States. By MCM Incorporated, solving America's security challenges now. By BB&T, the official bank of the Lake Mason Tennis Classic. And by GEICO, a 15-minute call could save you 15% or more on your car insurance. Well, it's hot here in Washington, but not nearly as hot as it is under Fernando Gonzalez's collar right now. He spent that entire walkover slamming his racket into the ground. Notice how quickly uh, Andres, Andre Agassi accommodated him. Came around real quick. Didn't stop very long on the changeover. That's the secret to his tennis, the footwork and the movement. And he is so sharp and so in shape. You just get the feeling he's going to get to the balls early. And that first serve has gotten better and better down the center. He really disguises it well on his toss. Looks like he's going to spin it out to your backhand and he slices it down the middle. He's never been an overpowering server, but always an effective server, a thoughtful server. And there you are, another slight serve for an ace. Only 101 miles an hour. You don't have to hit it at 130. It may surprise you, this stat from last year on the tour. Andre, number four on the entire ATP tour in service games won, 87%. You never think of Andre as a big server, but he's so effective. <laughs> It's gorgeous. 
You can't, what can he possibly do if that's unreturnable at 99 miles an hour? And he slices it so effectively in that corner that Gonzalez, even if he makes the return, is so far wide that Andres has the court open for the next shot. Yeah. And so uh, from 30 all, two quick easy points, and Andre holds, consolidates that break up to love in the second set. That is Horatio De La Pena, Gonzalez's coach, looking perplexed as you might imagine he would be at this point. This is the critical must game for Gonzalez. He can't drop two service games behind. Love to, he's got to hold. <laughs> thought he missed the first one, then I thought he missed the second. That might have been a make good. <laughs> trying to even it out. I don't know what uh, Horatio is listening to. Yeah, he's so confident here. Watch him move to his left and just leaves the ground slightly. The ball just inside the line. He hits the ball so fast and so far in front of his body, particularly on the backhand side. Gonzalez put a little more spin on that. That ball kicked a lot higher than Andre saw. Just wide there, 40-30. Has not had tremendous hard court results this year. In fact, he started the season awfully, just two and four in that early spring hard court season, trying to get it together. He plays on clay whenever humanly possible, including the last two weeks in Stuttgart and Umag. But he is on the board in the second set. First set to Agassi, 6-3. Second set continues right after this. Back to Washington, Andre Agassi up a break in the second. Let's go down to Russ Thaler. All right, I just talked to Fernando Gonzalez, the father, of course, the most nervous man in the building, but a smart man. I asked him if he was spending the entire summer in the United States. He said, no, I'll just come to Washington, go back to my hometown of Santiago, Chile, and come back for the U.S. Open. I asked him if he gives his son any pointers when he sees him at tournaments. He says, no, he is a trainer. So he's a supportive father and a smart one as well. That's a good seat to watch the young man. You don't see that very often on a hard court like this. Fernando getting some Chilean support here in Washington. We see the flags scattered around the crowd, just like we saw the British flags for Tim Henman. It's an international city, Washington, the embassy, bringing people out, buying blocks of seats. Just missed, but, uh, but get your protractor out for angles like that from Andre. Watch his quickness here. Puts that little spin second serve in. Comes in very fast, gets to the ball, tries to make a winner with a rolling forehand, but he's a two inches wide. And now 15-30 on Andre's serve. But that'll fix that right up the tee, 107. That's his sixth ace. 
And about four of them have been down the center of the court on the tee, right down the center. He slices the ball so well in the ad court. 30 all now. Greek player, and he never knows how many of those he's going to put together, those big booming forehands. There's another ace. Number three for Gonzalez. Smartly placed, just 93 miles an hour, but out wide in that ad court. Andre went the other way. He was leaning, went to the middle. Australia. That puts him past John McEnroe on the all time list. <laughs> Gearing up for what he hopes will be number nine at the U.S. Open starting later this month. He doesn't have that many left. Gonzalez, 40-30. Oh. And another ace on his racket. And Gonzalez holds consolidates his break back. Fernando Gonzalez may make a match out of this yet on serve for set to Andre. Back to DC after this. An absolute packed house at the Fitzgerald Tennis Center in Rock Creek Park watching Andre Agassi endeavor to make it to the finals against Tim Henman. He's facing Fernando Gonzalez and uh, he's just had his serve broken. Gonzalez was down two love in this set, and he suddenly roared back to 3-2, so he's got his good feeling again. <laughs> Confidence is such a difference. Agassi, very confident in this stadium court because of his results. I mean, 
Andre must get free points just off his reputation against a guy like this. Well, in the, in the warm up there, Gonzalez said when we talked to him, he, this is a dream come true. Just to play him. <laughs> just to play him. He hopes it won't turn into a nightmare. Yeah, it could quickly. There's just an aura about Andre when he's on a tennis court. It's intimidating. His coach trying to figure it out. Oh. 40 love here. Wow. Gorgeous return by Fernando. He really leaned into that shot <laughs> with the top spin. I guess he's got a backhand too. 40-15. Yeah. He holds three all second set. Now he said that Andre is the number one player in the world. That's on the ATP Tour entry system, according to the Champions Race, which is the year to date Andre number four. But there are some points up for grabs right here at this tournament. Andre can win 40 points if he can win this tournament, but of course here the points start zero at the first of the year and it's given every week the number of play the number of tournaments you play really determines where you finish. Ferrero won the French is in first place. We saw Federer on that list, the Wimbledon champion, and Coria, who has just been ripping it up in the clay court season. Uh, incredible results without having won a slam, and then Andre on the list next. Federer was entered into this tournament and was supposed to play, but late last week pulled out with a back injury, which if you read between the lines on that is, I played a lot of tennis in the last couple of weeks. I'm tired. Fifteen. 128 from Gonzalez. It's his fifth ace and he needed it right there. He's down left 30. Can't afford to lose serve here at three all. I guess he would love to climb on him, get off the court, and rest for tomorrow. Another ace. Where'd that come from? He makes it look so easy, Brett, the way he sets up. Not a big, long swing, just a quick high toss, and he belts it. Gonzalez, six feet, buck 80. Not a, an imposing figure. Seven to six in the ace department. Well, I beg your pardon. That is startling. Three straight aces by Gonzalez. Unbelievable. Anyone for four of a kind? He went for it. He sure did. Three steps inside the basement when he hit that return. He really attacked it, got it early, and he came in with it. Gets his shoulder into the backhand so well, turns and catches the ball early. So to deuce, dangerous territory for Gonzalez. Second serve, pretty big point. Andre hit that ball over the baseline. Didn't have to put a lot on it. Big serve off the tee, and what an impressive service game from Fernando Gonzalez, exhorting himself with a pumped fist. And after uh, going to the brink, he holds serve, and we are on serve. Second set. Agus gets it when we come back. Andre Agassi is, of course, one of just five players in history to have won all four Grand Slams in the career. He's won Australia three times, the French once, Wimbledon once, and the U.S. twice. Only Don Budge, Rod Laver, Fred Perry, Roy Emerson have done that. And he nails that backhand winner down the line. And, and Donald, I, I just wonder where you think that place is Andre in the, the pantheon of tennis history. Well, you know, 
I honestly, everybody talks about Sampras winning 14 Grand Slam titles, but six of them were at Wimbledon on grass. Excuse me, seven. I forgot the last one. And I think Andre is a, is a better all-around player. And historically, he's going to people are going to remember that longer. I mean, he can win on clay, and nobody else seems to be able to do it in America. He's won the French twice. And he likes, you know, he can play on any surface. And to me, that's why I always say Rod Laver is the best player to ever play, because he can win on all services. Take away the serve for Pete Sampras, which, of course, he can't take away Pete Sampras' serve. And Agassi. He got it back. Boy, didn't he? He not only hit it, it lofted into the lower bleachers. This is an amazing point here. Look at that return. Agassi on the line. Gonzalez saves it. Agassi doesn't put it away. And again, he's short. And there he hit the ball right off the top of his racket. And it sailed into the crowd. Just a miss hit. three Americans in all of tennis historically and in the world certainly in the top five ahead of McEnroe and Connors it's tough to be ahead of Connors uh, McEnroe was a great doubles player he didn't play that I didn't think he played oh. long enough and, and, he, and he didn't dominate seven slams Connors dominated when he was playing he was one you know for two and a half years that's all you know just personal subjectivity obviously but I felt Connors was, like Agassi, a tremendous ticket seller. Long, 40, 30. Strange sequence there. He takes a return of serve on a drop shot. That's unusual. And Agassi was not prepared for it. Slices a little spin. Beautiful touch off of second serve. Deuce here. Went for a big forehand return and missed it. That's a heck of a big point of Deuce in 3 4. You got to get the ball in play. Let's refresh your memory on what he did last time he served. Look out. Boom. There's one. <laughs> There's two. And right. Who says he can't serve? Gorgeous. saw with Henman in the first semifinal. Took him a little while to get the motor running. Gonzalez finding his way here in the second set. In case you missed it, Tim Henman fended off a match point against Andy Roddick. Came back to win, third set breaker. Not too humid, but 
but suddenly a, a sticky situation for Fernando Gonzalez, 15-30, on his serve at four all, two points away from Andre serving this out. And Andre, Andre understands he needs this next point if he wants to take control. More than twice as many errors committed by Gonzalez. <laughs> There's another one, and that takes Agassi to double break point at four all. A wild forehand. Live by the sword, die by the sword. Oh, that is a big 132 miles an hour on the serve from Gonzalez. This is eight face, and boy, came at a beautiful time. Still another break point for Agassi. Okay, man. Looks like he's got a switch, and when he gets into trouble, he flips it on. Just hit two of the biggest serves of the night, 132 and 128, and he's back to deuce. That one was 135. Agassi got it back. But then the backhand, what goodness. And Gonzalez, after facing double break point, gets himself back with some big time serving firepower. In Washington, we're back right after this. Chelsea's in the house rooting for Fernando Gonzalez and suddenly something to cheer about as he has cranked up the serves. Donald he pretty much serving consistently 105, 110 for most of the map. And then the last two service games, 130, 135, 132. Well, more than the power, he hit him on big points. I mean, 1540 hit two serves for aces when it really mattered. 4-5 on serve, second set. Andy Roddick hit a serve earlier this week at 142 miles an hour against Bob Bryan. But other than that, Fernando Gonzalez just gave us the fastest serve of the week. And 15 all. And uh, Andre needs to be careful here serving down 4-5. A break here and the set's over. in this game at 30 all. Very dangerous situation for Agassi. Gonzalez. Oh, he flips the tape and falls in. Second set to Gonzalez. Six games to four. 
A little lucky that that caught the tape and dropped in, but Gonzalez will take it, and for the second time today, the semifinal will go to three sets. Six games to three, second set to Fernando Gonzalez, six games to four, and it all turned on this one point in the last service game for Agassi. Set point, Agassi puts it in play. Look where Gonzalez is in the alley. The ball hits the top of the net. Andre thinks it's going out, and it hits solidly right on the baseline. Let's see the other angle. Now watch the ball carry. Andre stops, and the ball hits inside the line, and the set is Gonzalez. He actually could have gotten to that ball that's if right. he had kept on running, but he just assumed it was flying long until it clipped the tape, and that's that. So uh, one set apiece. Henman Roddick went to three, and now Agassi Gonzalez the same. Second day in a row, Agassi's gone to three sets. He went three against James Blake last night. Building in the Chilean. Gonzalez dictating the issue here. And also, Andre stumbled there. I don't know that he was tired, he just misstepped. But he really stumbled into that forehand side. And that's unusual. He could have just tripped, but you're right. If Gonzalez can hold here, he'll try to take control of the set. Funny how the fortunes of battle change so quickly. Double fault. Here's one for you. He looks so good on hard courts, so comfortable. Third set with Andre Agassi, number one in the world. And before Monday, he had not played a match on hard court, Fernando Gonzalez, since March. And oh, just waltzes into Washington and <laughs> takes Andre to a third. Your double fall figures. March. depth off the forehand side. If he can keep those big boomers in control and in the court, he could take control of this match. Oh boy, oh boy, I thought that ball was right on the line. It was a late call, he called it wide. Chair umpire did not overrule, second serve. Fergus Murphy from Ireland. holds to open set number three. Final. Here's your stat sheet through the first two sets. Both players serving at a high percentage, and while Gonzalez is making far more errors, it hasn't affected him negatively so far. Surprisingly, they've each hit nine aces apiece. And Gonzalez has stayed in, even though he's making double the errors. But he served awfully well in that last set when he was down 15-40 in that 3-4 game. He hit two aces. I think Andre's a little surprised at how big the serve is coming off his racket. I don't think he expected that at all. He looked in the book, saw Clay Quarter, said, okay, I'm going to get some topspin, I'm going to get a forehand, but not this. Told the ball boy to stay there. He doesn't want him running out. The ball's coming back deep off the let. Yeah. 
He's very particular in that way. In, in fact, if you ever watch Andre play and behind the court, if two ball boys end up on the skip side of the court, he'll motion one of them over. Yeah. So he has visual symmetry in what he's symmetrical. looking at. Yeah, he's, he's an idiosyncratic guy. He, he likes it just so when he's on the court. His shoes, where the ball kids are, everything. <laughs> But it works for him. <laughs> Gonzalez gets wrong. He sure did. He moved before he, he got finished the toss. He's moving to the backhand side, and Andre sliced him wide. Ten face for Agassi. Against just one double. 40 love. Yeah. And the 11th to close out his first service game in the third set, one all. Final set. Funny now, the crowd seems to be swinging back a little bit to Andre. They were really for Gonzalez pumped up in that second set. He met their cheers. And we got a match. Today was a three-set tie-break match with uh, Henman winning in the tie-break. They're getting their money's worth in Rock Creek Park today. French Open made the quarterfinals before losing to the eventual champion Ferrero. Wimbledon out in the first round. No sign of anything like this to come on hard court. Spun that ball right into the hip of Agassi, who did not move quickly, and he fouled it off. Underused serve, the body serve. Doesn't give somebody like Agassi room to swing and tee it up, get out of his own way. Very little emotion when he makes an error. He just keeps playing. Looks at the strings on his racket to distract his thoughts. He's very comfortable with that. Gonzalez can hold here with a good point. Players a lot of time take three balls, four balls, and then hit one back to the ball boy. Gonzalez does that all the time, wants the lighter ball. Gonzalez thought that ball was long, and in fairness, it looked a little long, and he's being rather demonstrative in his complaint. You know, under the rules, the chair umpire can overrule, but only when it's a clear error. That's the way the rule's written a couple of times that doesn't happen. Fergus Murphy made an immediate signal of, of good right after the lines person made the call. It's deuce. Ooh. And another heater at 132. It's, it's like when he gets angry. That's yeah, what spurs on the, exactly. the extra juice on the Gonzalez serve. Service motion is so effortless. 
very, very fluid. The serve, the forehand, all starting to gel for Fernando Gonzalez. It is a weapon, and he is using it effectively on serve, final set. Cruz through the first set, 6-3 in 25 minutes, but lo and behold, it has become one second set to Gonzalez, 6-4, we're on serve in the third. And Andre Agassi trying to claim his sixth, like Mason title, has got a major speed bump in front of him. Both players, Brett, have really served well. It's number 10 for Agassi of aces. And corrected, maybe 11. <laughs> Great serve out wide from Andre. Let's go back to the keys that you set out at the beginning of the match for Andre Agassi. How much is he fulfilling them? If you look there, I think his footwork's been fine. His, I don't think he stayed focused in that second set. He was so confident after the first one, and he certainly has not controlled the game from the baseline because Gonzalez has been too tough from the baseline. He's had too many good deep forehands for winners. 40-15 on Agassi's serve here. So he's been struggling. Andre's struggling to stay in this match right now. He can't afford to break a serve. Damn. Doesn't get one here. Relatively easy hold for Andre to get to two all in the third set. Now, on the contrary, these are the keys that you set up for Gonzalez. How much is he fulfilling his? Well, I think he's re returned sort of reasonably well, though. Andre's hit 12 aces. He has been attacking, but making a lot of errors, but he has not gotten discouraged. He's played himself into the match, and now he feels he can win it. Well, the variable that neither of us or I think Agassi accounted for was a very effective serve. He's getting free points off of it, and that combined with the lethal forehand has been a nice combination. the service line and dumped it into the tape. That was really unusual. Let's see as he sets up here. Very good forehand. The ball's short. Andre saves it with the lob. Lob is right on the service line and he goes right into the net with the forehand overhead. A little careless. 15 off. Agassi guessed wrong, and Fernando played behind him. You can just look at his face, though, and tell Brett he feels he can win the match now. He didn't believe it. That, he didn't think that when he started. Remember what he told our Russ before the match? Just a thrill to be here. See it again. Ball's very deep. He's wide. Look the quickness there. A little slice. It was, underspin. It was three balls. Three hits that. earlier. Uh -huh. Thirty all now. time you saw somebody out forehand, Andre Agassi? Not lately. The last four or five weeks. He got served off the court by Philip Pousses at Wimbledon. He yep. had 86 
aces and unplayable serves, but that's unusual. 12 to 2 in the forehand winner department for Gonzalez. That Filipusis match went to 6 4 in the fifth before the race succumbed. And a dicey forehand there goes wide, and Gonzalez holds serve, and we are on serve. Three games to two, final set. Can Andre stay alive? Third set on serve, getting down to nitty gritty time where you get the feeling whoever breaks, if anyone breaks, is going to win it. Here's your match update. Agassi. Lots of errors and winners from Gonzalez. Well, Agassiz serving 81%. That's awfully good. The winners are 28 25. Gonzalez, however, he has 28 to 17 unforced errors, which is a big margin. But he's on serve in the third set. And he's getting more and more confident. That's a perfect point of what I mean about Agassi staying focused. I mean, he overhit that backhand about a foot and a half. He didn't have to make it that good. Went right for the corner, right for the line. And he can't afford any careless errors now. Good serve. At court, out wide at a buck 13. <laughs> to the right hander. do that with success earlier in the match hit the overhead from deep in the court but that time it backfired <laughs> suddenly 15 30 on his serve opening let's serve Second double fault of the match, but what a time to do it. Now Gonzalez is thinking to himself, gee, you know, my hero, I can beat this guy. Now's where it gets interesting for the 23-year-old. He needs to hold serve twice. A lot can happen between now and then. A lot gets in your head. Your eyes get big. You think about the occasion. You look at who your opponent is. You realize a berth in the final is on the line. And, and muscles and, and shirt collars tend to get tight right about now. Oh. I can see a great returner in the sport if he double fault. Oh. Exactly what we're talking about. This is tenth double fault. That's a lot for any player in three sets. Gonzalez goes for his shots, whether it be a serve or whether it be a forehand. Nice deep serve there. Handcuffs Agassi, 15 all. Right now he's thinking seven points. He needs seven points. There, Gonzalez really hyped, really pumped. 
way out of court. Andre saves with the half volley stab. And look at Gonzalez. Watch the angle now. Watch after he hits the ball. He is so excited. Just long. And that's why. Forty fifteen. A point from five two. Nobody expected Henman to beat Roddick coming off the shoulder surgery, and nobody expected this. 5-2. Okay. The break consolidated. Gonzalez one game away from knocking out the number one player in the world. The crowd is somewhat in shock, and so is Andre Agassi. Not in his wildest dreams did he think he would lose on a hard court to a guy from Chile who hasn't played on a hard court since March. Fernando Gonzalez up 5-2 in the third set, one game away from the final. Wow. Is that a forehand? There's your example of confidence. He hit that ball as hard as he could off the forehand side and went for a winner. He made a great save there. He changed his shirt on the changeover. Maybe he'll change his luck. <laughs> He's not going to go down easy. That we know about Agassi. <laughs> wow. Forehand for forehand. Tit for tat. Let's see the great... Agassi forehand. You'll never see a better one than this. He steps right into the ball, covers it well with the top spin. Look at that footwork. Perfect setup, for perfect positioning of his shoulder. 30 15, Agassi. Deep second serve, set up the forehand winner. Agassi's roared back from Love 15 here in this game. All right, so Agassi holds to get to 3-5. Now, the question is, can this young man from Chile, who was ranked 135 in the world at the start of last year, keep it together for one service game and knock off the world number one. The moment of truth has arrived for this young Gonzalez. This is the biggest winning opportunity of his life. Well, they both hit out on every rally. Nope. No compromising them by either. The comparison is so stark. Gonzalez, three career titles. Agassi, 58. Gonzalez, a million five in career earnings. Agassi, 27 million. Painting the line with the forehand. Three points away. Serve to the backhand. He opens the court up, leaving the backhand side there. He hits that forehand in the alley, which is his favorite shot. Too good. Agassi catching the ball early, opens the court up and knocks the winner. Gonzalez a little out of breath now. He's 
taking some time here. Beautiful all-court play here by both. The forehand there. And Gonzalez stopped running because he's winded. 15-30. Wildness. Without regard, fearless. He said he was a shot maker, and you saw why. He just flicked that backhand like he was hitting a mosquito for a winner. All or nothing for Gonzalez now. Going for every shot off the ground. 30 all, two points away. Celebrated it here in Washington. What a celebration it would be if he won this point. Certainly would go for the second serve. He's not compromising at all. Double faults on match point to bring it back to Deuce. And that's nothing but nerves. Well, he went for the big serve down the middle. Silly play not to get it in play. Let's see how Andre returns serve here at Deuce. Why? Tim Henman saved match point in the first semifinal. Can Andre? And a break point for Agassi. He stared down the barrel of the gun. Is Gonzalez too tight? Is he too young? Is he ready to do this to his idol? He better get that first ball in. Great points. Agassi only two out of six. Gonzalez a five and a thousand. He goes for the big boomer. And now he's in trouble. Gives Andre a chance to play the second ball. Flips the tape. For a winner, and Andre Agassi faces down match point and gets himself back on serve. Goodness. Andre Agassi using every ounce of his experience on his own court. Back on serve in the third. The guy fending off match point like that. He's had great, great tennis today. Well, you know, it couldn't be any better for competitiveness. You don't do what Andre Agassi has done for the better part of two decades, eight grand slams, over a thousand matches played, and get nervous. And he maintained his boys down match point so well back on serve. And now you wonder, Donald, does that take all the air out of Gonzalez's balloon and confidence? Well, I think Andre still has to hold serve here. I mean, he can get in trouble and get behind in this game. That, that gives Gonzalez a big lift. But Long. He keeps flicking those errors right now. You can see his head down. He's hanging his head. Total change of body language on Gonzalez. Agassi has that look in his eye again. Agassi's won 11 out of the last 14 points. This set. He's too quick. Umpire set not up. That ball bounced oh, twice before Agassi hit it. That's baloney. I don't. I'd like to see that again. Although Agassi didn't contest it too much. Watch for the ball on Agassi's side of the net. Second bounce here. Agassi pops it up. There's one. I don't know. Off of close. Let's see if we can tell. There's one bounce. 
Yep, he good call. Right call. He good made the call. Right call to the chair umpire. And likewise, Gonzalez can't get to that. 40 15. Agassi has found himself at the net the last couple times on the big points. <laughs> Both players breathing heavily in the thick, humid Washington air. It's hot. They're working three sets. Second night in a row, Andre's gone the distance. A point away from evening the final set at five apiece. Second serve. He's going for a drop shot. A drop he, shot he, return. Off the second play. I mean, that is it's a 93 mile per hour speed there. That's pretty good. But Gonzalez hit about four of them. 40 30. Takes a little time here. Boy, that was a tired. Tired hit. 75 on the gun on a first serve. He is tired. <laughs> Gonzalez falls down behind the baseline drop volley into the open court. Agassi holds five all. What I love, Brett, is the way Agassi's changed his style. He's coming in now whenever he gets a short ball in the last three games. Down 5-2. He's pulled it back even. Watch Gonzalez. I don't know if it's sweat dripping behind the service line or what, but he loses his footing here. His right foot really slipped from under him. And he stayed down a while. He's tired, too. That's only five all in the third set. Not too tired to keep hitting winners off that forehand. Fabulous shot. It's really been an unbelievable display of ground strokes from both players. A, a, a literal forehand clinic. Unbelievable. Both times, Agassi pulled out so wide that he had to take his second hand off the backhand and still stays in the point. You can hear him groaning as he moves to his left. Saves one. It's short. And he's over there. This time he anticipated beautifully and opens the court with his favorite forehand cross court. 15 all. The one he loves. My goodness. And Gonzalez didn't like that call on the sideline, but... I think he's wrong. But with five all, you've got to play every ball. You can't, right. you know, hope the ball's going to go out or hope they're going to call it all. Darren Cahill, Andre's coach, the Australian, former top 25 player in his own right. Drop shot again. Andre's there and again clips the tape. Is that fatigue, Donald? He was a little slow covering it, but it was a beautiful touch here. Look at the shot right here. A little slice under the ball. Drops in real close. Andre's there, but he's tired. He's hit two of those in a row into the net. And that's when you're tired. 30 all. <laughs> what a serve. All and smacks a winner. That is long, and we have Deuce. You know, I, I think on that ball there, Andre hit a slice short, and Gonzalez ran around the backhand. He could have laid that ball down the line on the backhand and been in charge of the point, but in the net. But he chose to run around it, and that made it a tougher shot. 
He's so conditioned to running around that backhand, sometimes does him a disservice. Exactly, it's an instinct. Deuce here. Drop shotting Agassi all over the place. And he's winning the points. That was very, very startling clever. But he sees that Agassi's tired. I mean, it, it's like a fighter who's got a cut over his eye and he just keeps hitting the cut. But it's still tough. You've got to have great touch on this court to make them short. And another great serve out wide in the ad court, and Gonzalez holds. 6-5 on serve, final set. Andre will serve now to get into a third set breaker. Agassi with the balls on his racket will serve here to stay alive. If he loses, it's over. If he wins, third set breaker, which is exactly what we had in the first semifinal today between Hedman and Roddick. Hedman prevailing there. Shot return again, Donald. That time it didn't work. I've never seen that so frequently against Agassi anywhere. It's really remarkable that he has that much touch and he's been getting away with it, but Agassi covered that one nicely. Well, Andre may be tired, but he's not stupid, and yeah. if you do the same thing to him enough times, he will figure it out. That's exactly right. He's going to cover those drop shots at this stage. <laughs> And there is ace number 15 by Agassi. Only 92 miles an hour on that one. 92. But beautifully placed right down the center on the line. That is a clever, smart player. Quickly to 40 love. Agassi a point away from the breaker. And if you're Gonzalez, you might want to start thinking about where you're putting that first serve in the tie break, because that's where this is going. Breaker to decide the second spot in the championship match here at the Leg Mason. Andre Agassi, five times a champion at this tournament. Can he make it a sixth? Has to win this breaker first. And both players with excellent tie break records. Yeah, surprisingly, nine to three, ten to five. We're both in favor. Andre gets it wrong. I'll tell you what, both are tired. Andre is real tired. As he's guessing now, he took a chance there. He didn't have to. He moved to cover the forehand. And Gonzalez went to the backhand. 1 0 Gonzalez. Did it again. This guy is really just, he's doing just what he said he was going to do. You'll see here, Andre spins the ball in. He runs around his backhand, goes to the inside out open court. He said at the beginning, I'm going to go for my shots. That's my game plan. And he sure has. And that one wildly long. Both of Agassi's serves broken by Gonzalez, 3-0. And Gondo is really tired. Of course, you get pumped if you're ahead in the tiebreaker, as Gonzalez is now with a big chance with two serves coming up. Remember, you have to get to seven points, 12-point tiebreaker, and win by two.
fell down again. You know, this is a carbon copy of the match that we saw this afternoon. Henman losing the first set, as Gonzalez did badly, then coming back, going to a third set breaker and getting ahead early. Andre opens the court up. Gonzalez with the forehand. Now he slips and falls. And Andre's noticed that. He just plays it back into the middle of the court. 3-1 Gonzalez, one of the mini breaks back. This is a huge point for Agassi. Four one Gonzalez. Great second serve and a better forehand winner. He just can't play any better than this. There's his coach. Remember, Gonzalez led in the third set, five games to two, up a break, serving for it. Had a match point. Agassi worked his way back into the set, forced the tie break. Now down, 4 1. Four two, they'll change ends. The rules are not supposed to sit down. They can towel off quickly and change every six points in the tiebreaker, and they both do. Still in this tiebreaker. 4 3, Gonzalez leaves, but still up a mini break. He's got the next two. Mini break, we should explain, he can serve four times and win the set and the match if he can hold his next four serves. Andre needs to break one of these Gonzalez service points. On the line, called good. Gonzalez, disbelief. If it stands, which it will, there's the mini break back for all. You be the judge. Let's see it again. If, watch closely, Andre. It's it down the line. The ball's floating. Tough to tell from there. Gonzalez will be well served to calm himself down right now. Points over. The chair umpire nodded that it was good. He's not going to overrule. And we're at four all, regardless. It was 3-0, now 4-all on serve. This match is dead even. Forehand after forehand. Agassi got the mini break back, but look at this forehand here. A little short there with the backhand return. And Gonzalez punishes him. Beautiful place because the ball sat up for him and he creased the forehand. Boy, he loves that shot. 5 4 Gonzalez. Agassi down the line, two handed backhand, five all. You see what he did there? He spun the first serve in at 77 miles. Didn't go for a big one. Wanted to get that first serve in. And now there's one point separating either player to win this match. After an hour and 59 minutes of tennis, dead even. going to Gonzalez's backhand side. Very deliberate. And he came up with the goods. And will get now match point on his serve. That was the biggest point of the match. And he just crunched that backhand. A little topspin 
in the corner perfectly. Agassi didn't move. Extra breath for Gonzalez, his second match point. And Fernando Gonzalez, 23 years old from Chile, hasn't played a hard court match since March, takes out the number one player in the world. Unbelievable. Watch the Chileans there. They're screaming. He hit the ball up in their direction to thank them. But Gonzalez is unreal the way he played today. 7-6 in the tiebreaker, winning this match. Very few thought he could win it before tonight. Fernando Gonzalez, an underdog of gigantic proportions against Andre Agassi, will be in the final of the Lake Mason. We'll talk to him after this. Here in Washington, still in shock. Fernando Gonzalez, the Chilean, knocking out Andre Agassi, number one in the world, 7 6 in the third. Our Comcast fastest serve of the night belonged to Fernando Gonzalez, a buck 35. And Donald, this is the portion of the match where he just flipped the switch and started serving. Won the point. It was a sequence of serves that he got up in the 130 range, and it served him well. Caught Agassi off balance. Our champion standing by with Russ Thaler. Russ? Okay, guys, thanks you very much. Fernando Gonzalez, before the match, you said it was a dream come true to just play against Andre Agassi. And now, in front of these fans in Washington, D.C., your countrymen and your father, you have just defeated the number one player in the world. How do you feel? It's a dream come true. Uh, when I check the hands with, with Andre, I say, this is a dream for me. And I grew up watching and enjoying how Andre plays, and I really enjoyed this, this moment. It seems today you beat Andre Agassi at his game, shot making at its best here at the Leg Mason. This is my style. I have a good advantage against Andre because I've been watching him playing since like 15 years ago, and I think he doesn't know who I am, so that's a great for me. <laughs> and now Tim Henman in the finals tomorrow. What do you know about Tim? Yeah, I play a couple of times with him. He's a tough player, good netball, and I don't know, let's see tomorrow. Fernando, congratulations. Good luck tomorrow in the finals. Let's send it right back up to the booth. Guys, thank you very much, and congratulations to Fernando Donald. This is a clay court player. This is a young player. How impressed are you with his game and well, his poise knocking out Andre? Well, the poise is what impressed me most because he served big at 1540, came in with two aces, and he just kept playing better and better in that tiebreaker. Tough pressure. Hugs his dad there on the side. He just flew up for this. So tomorrow, our final is set. Tim Henman of Great Britain will take on Fernando Gonzalez of Chile for the Leg Mason Championship. That is going to do it for us. Make sure you join us tomorrow for the final. Until then, for Donald Dell and our entire crew here in the nation's capital, I'm Brett Haber. See you tomorrow, everybody.